as Russia searches for allies in a sea of global condemnation for its war in Ukraine, it has enlisted a variety of tools to change hearts and minds. Propaganda, disinformation campaigns, and the Wagner mercenary group, to name a few. DW has found that in some African countries, Russian propaganda is proving very successful. Celia Toms from the DW fact-checking team reports now on how Russia is undermining democratic efforts. This is Kimi Seba, a French Beninese influencer spreading pro-Russian and anti-Western propaganda on social media. Right after Russia began its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, he posted this video. Putin veut récupérer son pays. Really? Fact is, Russia invaded a sovereign, independent nation and took parts of Ukraine's territory. It's only one of the false claims the influencer has shared online in support of Russia in this war. His message reaches many people. More than one million people follow him on Facebook and over 250,000 on Instagram. He is part of a growing network of people who claim to be pan-African. Investigative research done by several international media companies and open source collectives shows Seba has close ties to the Russian private military company Wagner Group. Along with other influencers like Natalie Yomp, who calls herself the Lady of Sochi. Yomp has been a speaker at events sponsored by the Russian government. The US government and the open source project All Eyes on Wagner concluded that Moscow is paying a number of local influencers to spread propaganda across the African continent. Hiring them um, to kind of find out what are some of the hot button issues, what are some of the, the more polarizing issues, and then inflaming those, kind of um, getting people worked up around them. Opinions among Africans are divided when it comes to the war in Ukraine. Not everyone is persuaded by the pro-Russian views. In most countries shown in a recent poll, a majority believe the Russian invasion of Ukraine was against international law and that Russia is guilty of committing war crimes in Ukraine. Still, Russia continues to try and undermine democracy in several African countries. Particularly affected Mali, Sudan, the Central African Republic and Zimbabwe. In three of these countries, the Russian paramilitary Wagner Group operates and videos like this appear. Another example of Russian propaganda. This time targeting Mali, Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast. The cartoon propaganda video was viewed thousands of times on social media and appears to be directly linked to the Wagner Group. Anti-French sentiment also appears to be on the rise in former French colonies like Mali. And their governments are looking for ways to distance themselves from the former colonial power. This has made way for Russia to present itself as a peacekeeper that defends Africa. For South African researcher Justin Arenstein, Russia's goal is to appear as an alternative to the status quo. Even prior to the Ukrainian war, we saw Russia um, aggressively trying to build support for its policies, often when they were contrary to European or NATO or North American policies. Arenstein adds that Russia is not the only country investing in propaganda in African countries. Many want to gain more influence in the region. However, Russia does it in a particular way. But they undermine open societies, they undermine the ability of, of citizens to make their own choices and that there is a level of physical um, coercion involved. While Russia remains isolated in global politics, experts say it needs Africa. By spreading fake news propaganda and anti-Western narratives, they want to gain influence on the African continent and show they have a role to play. And let's get more now. We are joined here in the studio with Katrin Wieselowski from DW's fact-checking team. So, I mean, we saw their social media influencers, um, videos, for example. Um, how extensive is the Russian infrastructure when it comes to spreading disinformation and propaganda? So we can say that the um, propaganda network on the African country, uh, continent is very big. So Russia, for example, finances radio stations in Africa, for example, in, in Central African Republic, and also the Russian, Russian state um, 
uh, Russian uh, state-owned media outlet RT, formerly known as Russia Today, has corporations with media on the ground, like uh, Afrik Media, for example, based in Cameroon. And we also, or Russia also has a lot of Russian embassies in African countries, which spread a lot of propaganda, like on Twitter, for example. So we can say that Russia's propaganda network is really, really big in Africa. Russia has been increasingly isolated among Western countries, um, especially given, you know, sanctions, um, uh, given its invasion of Ukraine. Why is Africa and, and influence there so important to Russia, especially now? So we talk to experts and they say that Russia really needs Africa and mainly because of three reasons. So as you already mentioned, Russia is really isolated internationally and Russia still wants to legitimize its war in Ukraine. So it seems that the African autocracies of some countries um, could be a very good like partner for Russia or for Putin. And secondly, Russia is also locked out of the European market or the US markets. So it also it's looking for uh, new economic marketplaces, which African countries could provide. And thirdly, Africa still has a lot of raw materials. So in return for their services, the uh, mercenaries, the Wagner troops, get access to these raw materials. And experts say that this gold, for example, finances the mercenaries' actions on the continent and also the war in Ukraine. Um, we have to say there's this Russia-Africa summit going on right now. Some Africa leader, African leaders have shown up there, although not as many as, as the previous summit. We've also seen on the continent, um, you know, various leaders refusing to denounce the Russian invasion of Ukraine. How successful have disinformation campaigns been on the continent, perhaps with, with that in mind? Mm -hmm. So we have to say that Africa is deeply divided. So some African countries are influenced by Russia's propaganda and some are not. So according to experts, Russia's influence is biggest in the countries such as Central African Republic, Mali, Sudan and Zimbabwe. And it's also interesting because they are also like mainly the Wagner groups operating and or they, they have been seen there. Um, and still to understand why Russia can be so um, successful in some, uh, some countries is... Um, to like look back in history. So Africa, uh, Russia has never been a colonial power uh, in the coloniza colonization era, in contrast to France, for example, and that's why Russia can be so successful in some African countries. And Russia also supported um, many African countries in fighting for independence in the late 20th century. Thank you so much, Katrin Wieselowski from DW Fact Check. We appreciate it.